Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our revisited review of the iPhone 6 slash 6 Plus in 2019. This is a device that we revisited last year, but since then it's seen a few updates including iOS 12, which has definitely improved the performance. However, the value of the phone has also come down a little bit now that the iPhone 6S and the 6S Plus can be purchased for about the same price online. In terms of design, it's a very classic look. It has Apple's Touch ID, the fingerprint scanner on the front, we have a front-facing camera, the standard volume controls on the side. It's still is a pretty slim looking phone made very well out of an aluminum unibody. The only slight aging part would be the display which has a traditional 16 by 9 aspect ratio compared to the taller 19 by 9s or 2 by 1s that we see now. So it looks a little antiquated from the front because of the larger bezels but uh, overall it's still a phablet at least the 6 plus is because it has a 5.5 inch full HD display. The back has a 8 megapixel camera which is also slightly showing its age. Uh, it doesn't and capture the most details. However, megapixels aren't everything, and in terms of exposure and white balance, it still does a pretty good job overall, I'd say. So in terms of, again, the performance, since we saw it uh, last year, it has actually improved. iOS 11 was notorious for being quite sluggish, especially on older devices like the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus, which have only one gigabyte of RAM, which is quite limited. Combined with aging batteries if you're purchasing a used unit, uh, it often really degraded the performance. Thankfully, much of that has been improved with iOS 12, and now it feels as fast as it was almost a few years back, a few updates ago. Not quite as fast as when it was brand new out of the box, when Apple was still working exclusively on this generation of products to optimize its performance only for it. However, it's gotten a lot better, and now it seems like almost a new device in terms of the kind of uh, overall responsiveness of the touchscreen, a lot faster in terms of opening up apps. Still, if you're Comparing it next side by side next to a newer iPhone like an iPhone 7, uh, an 8, or a 10, it still definitely will be a lot slower. And part of that has to do with the processor, again, which is a fairly kind of antiquated chipset by now, combined with just, again, one gigabyte of RAM. Of course, iOS has always been pretty good in terms of optimizing performance, even on technically lower-end hardware compared to Android counterparts. But uh, that one gig of RAM, I would say, is the part that's showing its age the most, because if you're trying to run a few programs in the background, if you have more than a handful open, it becomes a lot slower to jump back and forth, and opening up new apps will take maybe 5 to 10 or 15 seconds longer, and that will definitely test your patience a little bit. Now, as aforementioned, I would say that here in 2019 and heading out, this is probably going to be the last update that we'll see on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, this generation of iPhones. Um, if you want continued longevity, maybe support for another year or two, I would again recommend that you look towards the iPhone 6S or the 6S Plus. Not only will it support probably iOS 13, but also it has again 2 gigabytes of RAM and a much newer and faster processor which will again give you improved performance as uh, things will only get more complicated and apps will require more RAM and uh, you know faster performance down the road. So overall I would say that this is still a perfectly usable phone. In fact it's uh, still responds quite well right now and in terms of you know, performance every day, you don't really notice too many problems, but again, it really is probably on its last leg, so to speak. And if you look right now on Amazon or eBay and you are considering picking up a new phone, again, the price difference right now between the 6 and the 6S, the 6 Plus versus the 6S Plus, isn't as big as it was a year ago, where it was almost a two times difference. Back then, I think it was really justifiable because this thing was a lot cheaper, but again, that's no longer true. However, you can take a look here in terms of general image quality for photographs, it still is pretty decent. Obviously, it won't compare with the latest flagships anymore, like the iPhone 10, the 10s, um, you know, the, the Google Pixels of the world. But it still does a pretty good job, especially considering it's only a 8 megapixel sensor. And uh, opening up the camera is still pretty fast and responsive. With the latest iOS version 12, we can um, take a look at additional settings and filters. There's HDR mode, and again, still very responsive, uh, considering this is a very old phone now that is running on the latest version of Apple's software. Uh, you can also capture video up to full HD resolution, slow motion, all of those things can be done here without too many problems. Switching back and forth still feels quite responsive. Just don't expect the sharpest details in terms of resolution because it's not the most megapixels, but the overall quality of the image in terms of the, the lights, the shadows, all turns out pretty well as you can see here. 
This is actually a demo of a slow motion video trying to slow down the frames of uh, this snowfall here. Pretty unusual weather here in February for Seattle, but you can see it's working actually quite well. Um, in terms of battery life and performance, it's never been a super strong suit of the uh, kind of iPhone 6 in general. The 6 Plus is a little bit better. It will definitely power you through an entire day's use and the lightning port can fully charge it up in under two hours. It's very fast in terms of top-up speeds, but again, it's not going to be an endurance king. And just keep in mind, if you're purchasing a used phone in general, the battery is bound to kind of degrade. So I would also suggest maybe looking at a refurbished unit that might actually get you some longer use if you do need something that lasts a little bit longer. But overall, it's satisfactory. Um, again, in terms of display quality, I would certainly say it still is quite good uh, because again, the 6 Plus has a full HD display. It's a retina and it's very sharp, um, pretty similar in fact to even the newer iPhones like the iPhone 7s and iPhone 8s. Um, probably not 4K quality, but at the same time, unless you're using it for VR purposes, it's still plenty sharp. It's just again slightly larger bezels on the left and the right sides but if you can get past that uh, maybe a little bit less immersive for watching videos it still is a great display as far as LCD panels are concerned um, IPS it's calibrated very well so colors in general are pretty accurate looking in terms of app support, since again it is running on the latest version of iOS 12, there's no problems as far as installing all the latest titles from the iOS store. It's just if you are trying to run a really complex title like PUBG, for example, it will take significantly longer to load, not to mention that you will notice some more dropped frames since the kind of GPU and the processor are both not as uh, you know flagship level anymore. But for simpler titles like Stack, more 2D type games, you can see it still works quite well, fairly smooth, and uh, not too many problems here. It still is quite responsive to use and play. Really, since if you're considering this phone now in 2019, it would be price as your first objective. So you're probably not going to be super concerned, I guess, with the technical specs or uh, really need a phone with flagship level performance. But you can see here for general games and apps, most 2D titles, they will still load back just fine. And really, it's the same deal when it comes to other elements of the performance, like web browsing, uh, utility tools, uh, watching back YouTube videos. Again, all of those things are fully functional, and really, it still you know, is pretty comfortable to use. So if you own an iPhone 6 or a 6 Plus right now, again, you can definitely still use it for sure for at least you know a year or two. But uh, again, if you are considering buying this now because you have the choice of picking this or the iPhone 6S Plus, I would again recommend that because you will get some slightly more longevity out of it and slightly faster performance as well, which might make a even bigger difference uh, again a few months down the road. As with all iPhones, make sure you pick the capacity, uh, the memory that you need right out of the box because there's no way, of course, to expand it with something like a micro SD card. So if you want to get, again, maybe 64 gigabytes, uh, that would probably be recommended if you have a lot of media uh, to store, such as movies or MP3s, compared to, again, 16 or 32 gigs can fill up pretty fast. So something to quickly keep in mind. Or you can always opt for online cloud storage and that works as well. It, of course, syncs with just standard iTunes, nothing really new there. Um, otherwise, uh, all the new controls with iOS 12, such as Spotlight Search, you can pull down to have access to a universal search. All of those things, again, work pretty well. A lot more statistics that show you the usage habits of your phone, uh, which are pretty fun to take a look at. So it's using some AI tricks. And again, it's nice to see that a pretty old phone is still getting these new features updated. It doesn't have the group FaceTime, which is a feature that's restricted to the newer devices. Uh, but other than that, it has, again, pretty much all the same functions for now that you can still perform on it. So in terms of, uh, again, pricing, if you're looking on Amazon or eBay right now, this is a phone that you should probably pick up for, I would say, around $100, maybe even a little bit less if you can find it for that. Uh, so it's a huge price reduction, of course, compared to when it was new, and also a huge cost saving if you're comparing it to the latest iPhone 10, that can cost upwards of a grand. So from the perspective of hardware value, it still is very strong and compelling. Again, Android budget phones are just getting stronger and stronger as well. They are narrowing the gap. A lot of Huawei's Honor phones and Xiaomi's Redmi devices are also pretty strong options. So if you are looking for maybe an Android counterpart, or if you're not locked into the Apple ecosystem, it may also be worthwhile to consider an Android alternative since, again, they are getting pretty good and you can get a newer device now that has, again, more longevity for about the same price of $100 to $200. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Uh, but if you do just want a budget-oriented, you know, iOS smartphone, 
This one is definitely still perfectly usable, and if you get it at the same price, again under $100, it could still be a great option to pick up, maybe use as a backup phone or as again a low-cost device, even good for kids I'd say, uh, perhaps as a media player as well since it still has the regular headphone jack as well on the back. Um, all the features including 4G for accessing data, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth of course all work quite well, just keeping in mind that it's no longer the fastest phone on the market, and I think that you'll still be reasonably satisfied. Uh, but if you can, again the iPhone S or the 6S or 6S Plus might be stronger options to consider now that the price has fallen. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.